Hi, I'm Joshua from Tactiles. We make an app-powered electronics kit that would turn you and your kids from talented to an electronics genius in 100 projects. Before starting Tactiles, I was working as an academic business development manager for a multinational company. And one of my main job back then is to talk to a lot of teachers, understand their problem, and design the perfect electronics kit that would help them into teaching their subject matter better. What I found out was, although robotics is a very good subject, and a lot of them would want to play with robotics kit and use this as a part of their teaching environment, they couldn't effectively do it if they don't have a good background of two subjects, programming and electronics. And although there are a lot of good programming toys out there, as with there are already a lot of good robotics kit, what we find out is there is no kit that teaches electronics in a manner that we and teachers thought it should be taught. There are already a lot of kits out there that says they focus on electronics. But if you go down to the details, they actually focus more on programming or the invention and not on teaching the necessary theories like what voltage is, what current is, and how these things interact together to give the students and the teachers the background that they need to understand circuitry in full. And that is the reason on why we invented the IQ. This is the IQ. It's composed of 20 different electronic blocks, each representing a specific component. We handpick the component to make sure that when you play with the IQ, you would learn all of the topics needed and required by the Creative curriculum when it comes to circuitry. For example, we have the power source, a block that converts electricity into light, and a block that converts electricity into sound. These are blocks that are usually taught. These are topics that are usually taught in third grade. We have the current meter and the voltmeter, which allows you to measure electricity and understand the relationship between current and voltage, a sixth grade topic. If you also notice, the corresponding electronic symbol for each component are also included in the blocks because these are also part of what a student is required to learn when they're studying electronics. We have capacitors, which allows you to learn about time circuit response, a topic that is required for 12th grade. And building something with the iCube is very simple. All you have to do is connect the blocks together. For example, if I want to build a circuit that lights up, then I would have to get my power source, connect my lamp, and as you see, it snaps together magnetically. After I've completed my circuit with the ground, you'd see your invention in action. For example, now, my circuit is lighting up. If I want to be able to control it, all I have to do is add a switch in the middle, and now I'm able to turn it on and off. If I want to adjust the brightness of lamp, all I have to do is grab a resistor, which changes the amount of current flowing into the circuit, allowing me to make it brighter or dimmer. The main reason on why a lot of teachers and parents love the iCube is the app. This is the iCube app. Once you hear the music, you know that it's already activated. The cool thing about the iCube app is that everything that the kit is doing with the hardware, the app is able to monitor. For example, when you turn the block on, the software is able to monitor it and start streaming information from your block to the software. You're able to connect to the app in two ways. You can connect through Bluetooth, as I'm doing now, or through USB, if you're running it in a Windows machine. As I mentioned earlier, everything that you do in the hardware is monitored by the app. When you connect things, for example, and when you disconnect them, 
And the cool thing here is not only are you monitoring the connection or disconnection, you're also able to see how much voltage is being produced, for example, and how much brightness the electricity is able to output. And these numbers are important, especially when you want to go down into understanding the underlying electrical theory needed. For example, connecting the resistor to my lamp circuit allows me to see that 40 kilo ohms of resistance produces a 10% brightness in lamp. What we do with this measurement is we take them in and read this data to customize the learning experience of the kid and adjust it depending on whether if we see they're having any difficulty or they're breezing through the projects one by one. The main strength really comes with the projects and the IQ comes with 100 different projects that the kids can do, each increasing in difficulty and each covering a specific topic that they are required to learn. We designed this project to cover the entire K-12 curriculum, starting off from the simplest of topics where no experience in electrical theory is needed. For example, understanding how a power source works, which is a third grade topic. If you go to projects 40, for example, this project, for example, teaches them the concept of electrical diagrams and how each of those components corresponds to a specific IQ block. Project 61, for example, teaches them the concept of how a current meter works. Project 84 is a sixth grade topic teaching them the concept of Ohm's law, which is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Project 90 teaches them about capacitors, a senior level topic teaching them how you are able to store electricity into a single component. The projects are designed to make sure that we teach the concept in a very structured and easily understandable manner. When we are teaching a new concept, the first thing that the IQ does is have the student observe how the new concept they are exploring works. For example, here, we are asked to make a buzzer circuit. A buzzer is a component that they've already learned in a previous project. And when they see this, they're able to recognize that the, the IQ is asking them to build something that would produce sound. I would want to give you, I would want you to focus on the buzzer circuit here and what happens, for example, if I connect the wrong block. The IQ is able to recognize whether the block that you have connected is right or wrong. In a way, this allows us to track whether the kid, whether the student is following instructions and building what they're supposed to be built. We're able to do this because, I've, as I mentioned earlier, we're able to track everything that the kid is doing when it comes to playing with the kit. And as you can see, they're not able to move on into the next step until they have built the correct circuit, which is currently the buzzer and the ground. At this part is where they would be able to first see how a switch works. Previously, they haven't been able to play around with this block. And at this project, they would be asked to connect the switch and at the same time observe what happens if I turn it on and off. It is at this part where they would learn that connecting a switch allows them to turn their circuit on and off. After they have observed the circuit, we ask them a question with the objective of having them understand the underlying theory. We do it in a form of a question and answer because we want them to make an educated guess. Right? It doesn't matter if they select the incorrect answer. If they do so, we tell them that it's incorrect and we explain to them why. At the same time that if, they, if, we, if the students select a correct answer, we explain to them why the answer is correct 
which builds the foundation necessary for them to understand what they're building. And when we explain things, we provide the explanation and at the same time give them an illustration or animation that drives the concept further, allowing them to further understand the topics better. And once they have built the, a good level of knowledge of what to do, and a good level of understanding of the underlying theory, we give them projects like these, which we call the invent mode, where we don't give them instructions, we just give them an objective of what they're supposed to build. And we check the circuit that they've built to see whether they have built the correct project or not. The beauty here is that if they have if they have built something incorrectly, like for example this one, where it asks them to build something that turns a circuit on and off, but the circuit that they built doesn't do so, the software is able to recognize that and tell them that they are able that they didn't build it properly. If they had if if they went through three incorrect answers. This, the project would actually tell them the correct solution to it which is for this one is connecting a switch a lamp and grounding the circuit for example let me go back to that project again And one beauty with the iCube is that it's able to recognize all possible correct solutions. If I connect my switch, my lamp, and my ground, it's able to connect it's able to see that that is a correct answer in the same way that if I connect the lamp first, the switch next, and the ground last, that this is also the correct answer. So the iCube is smart in a way that it recognizes all possible solutions to a given problem and tell your students whether what they really built achieves the objective or not. And this is the same set of teaching that goes through all 100 projects that are included with the IQ. I hope you enjoyed our short demo of the IQ and saw how a modular building block coupled with a very powerful app allows you to build an effective learning tool for teaching circuits.